the story continues. I get back to I'm driving cross country, and I remember the first motel I stayed at after leaving Michigan, the first night I drove all the way to like western Missouri, and then from I slept in a rest area, and there was a song, I think it's called Born Without You by Storytown, and it talks about being born without someone and doing all right just to keep it that way and that made me think about uh, you know being born without any you know attachment figures and then being adopted by the people that had just put me in the intervention and stuff so and then also shine on you crazy diamond by Pink Floyd was playing and uh, so I had probably four hours of sleep or something I was pretty wired from all the anxiety of the situation of the intervention and just feeling betrayed and just getting, uh, you know, getting broken up with and all that drama. So I, I drove to New Mexico uh, in the second day and got a motel in Albuquerque. And I hooked up my computer, figured out how to dial up through the motel system, <laughs> having to dial nine or something first and, and, and get a connection to the internet. And I wrote the four people of my intervention, mom, stepdad, former friend, former friend's wife, slash former friend. And, um, and I told them they obviously didn't feel like they had any intention to, to know who I was and that they were not people that I wanted to deal with in my life. And as I drove towards Flagstaff, Arizona, I was like, do I go south to Phoenix or do I keep going? to California, because that's where I had been last. And it was interesting, something, oh yeah, a twister f went across the highway in front of me. And it, uh, you know, was heading in the direction of California, which I think was a sign. And it, as, <clears throat> but I had more resources, more people, I only knew one person in California, Northern California Bay Area, and I knew a bunch of people still in Arizona, so I thought it would be easier as I readjusted to life to go to Arizona. So I went there, and the song Uninvited by uh, Alanis Morissette was playing as I got into Phoenix, and Life is a Highway, and so I took these as like further signs that maybe California was where I was supposed to be, but again, I took the, the, the easy route of you know where people I knew would be. Stayed at a friend's place and then rented a really cheap, probably two hundred dollar, two fifty room with a woman in a kind of crappy part of Tempe, Arizona. She had like a lot of cats, like five or six, and a little Chihuahua. And um, so there's just a lot of a lot of cat hair everywhere. I stayed mostly in my room. We had a little shower next to it, and I'd cry in my shower. I was doing a lot of grieving about feeling betrayed by my family and misunderstood and disconnected and just uh, my ex-girlfriend and just you know just kind of weep in the shower so my roommate couldn't hear me and uh, it was a really dark time I started uh, dating a woman pretty quickly but it became clear after just a few weeks or so that I just was in no place to be dating and uh, ended that and in a little while, I got a, a my own apartment, like a studio apartment, uh, off campus, and that was where I spent my first. I think it was my first time spending a major holiday alone. Like I don't spend Christmas, I don't celebrate Christmas anymore. But I, uh, at the time, felt really uncomfortable because all my friends were leaving out of town in Arizona, and I was left alone. And I kind of surrendered. I was doing the Conversations with God website at the time. Doing, I was their webmaster. And I just surrendered, and I remember listening to an album by R.E.M. called Up, and just kind of connecting with the kind of dark and mystical nature of that album. And I did some graphic design for the website, just kind of surrendering into that kind of work. And, and it was okay when I surrendered to it, but it was a pretty depressing time. And then there was a time, while living in that apartment, 
in the ceiling, a little dust or whatever was coming out. I don't know, termites or some kind of bug seemed to be eating through the ceiling. And I received some complaint for playing music too loud, which the walls must have been really thin because I was not really cranking it. But those things were signs that it might be time to go. But there I was. One day, though, I just uh, I decided to break my routine with my work on the computer and doing tarot readings. That's what my work was at the time, was doing tarot readings over the internet through email. And I just left my little crappy apartment and went to the top of South Mountain in Phoenix. And I think I think there's more pollution that accumulated in the valley during the winter time. The Metro Phoenix area is a valley. And it was um, just ugly to look across and see the pollution and how heavy it was from that vantage point. And at the time when I was up there, there was like a Bob Seger song about uh, riding on a motorcycle and getting away and it was like I could go east or I could go west, it was up to me to decide, and so I thought, this is all a sign, and I just got in my car, instead of going back to my apartment, I drove like an hour and a half north to a town that I visited a lot on various camping excursions and, and little day, day trips called Payson, Arizona, and I started looking for a place. I went to a little real estate agency, and I found a very affordable three-bedroom home for rent that was pretty private and this Payson had a lot of trees and a lot of just really natural kind of experience, you know, it was just a real natural experience to be in, in fresh air and is a mountainous area and uh, just felt very clean and a good break. But I, uh, I decided that I, as much as I was enjoying it, I was really missing people. I was really missing connection. I'd always want people to come visit me. I always want, you know, that contact. So it was good to purge alone and, and be with my own energy. And really, I was very focused on my work and, and that kind of thing. But one day, I got this huge energy bill. I think because it snowed in April and it was cold a lot. And my place was poorly insulated. And I just couldn't afford it. And I just kind of, one thing led to another, and I felt like a breakdown, and went back and stayed with a friend of mine in, in the Phoenix area, and eventually decided to move back there um, to the Phoenix area again. And I moved into a little uh, apartment, it was a one bedroom that was comfortable, solid, good thick walls. I think my neighbor was regularly seeing prostitutes. <laughs> and um, once I came home and there was, it looked like a, a pimp pounding on his door with a prostitute. And I, instead of walking into my place in case there was a shooting or something, I just kept walking and just hid in the darkness because I didn't want them to know where I lived if this guy was gonna kill my neighbor. Uh, I think it was a secondary home he wasn't there much except when he was meeting up with women that I believe were prostitutes and so it was it was interesting it was otherwise a pretty nice place I stayed there for many years and I went through like two years of not dating anyone just I had so much personal healing to do and was very focused on my work and was interested in polyamory uh, dated a woman who I met through a group and she had a husband and it was all very strange and interesting but uh, <laughs> I remember once just feeling kind of down during that time and feeling like I was bored and I didn't want to go hang out with my friends at the bar I just was sick of it all and I told her I felt bored and she said well maybe you you know are bored with yourself and need an adventure and and then a friend from Bay Area, the Bay Area, the one person I knew, called me around that time. And I took it as a sign that maybe it was time for me to move on and, uh, and go back to the Bay Area. So that's where I'll pick up next time my triumphant return to the Bay Area.